Hey everyone, what's up? Sagi here. And another video where I'm going to show you something in a way that I use to accelerate my productivity and my work on a day-to-day -day basis. So today I'm going to show you Arc. Arc is a new browser that basically allows you to do more. I think they kind of like rethought the user experience of browsing. And I really, really love their uh, user experience. I'm going to talk about seven ways in which I dig Arc. I'm not going to show everything around it. It's not like a, it's not like a thorough overview of Arc. This is just what I love about Arc and how I use it in my day to day. Sounds good? All right, let's go. First thing that I love about Arc is this sidebar over here. So what you see in the sidebar here is a way for us to navigate within the different tabs on the side, which is different than Google Chrome, which has them on the top. Now, by the way, just to say, I'm not gonna talk about privacy at all in this video. So if you're for the privacy group, it's not me. I didn't, I'm just looking for the best user experience. So I don't know anything about Arc's privacy or non-privacy. I know Google Chrome is sure not, you know, <laughs> taking care of our privacy. So at least from what I know, so I don't, I, you know, for me, anything is an upgrade on that part. So. I'm coming to Arc back to the user experience. The tabs here on the side, I think is a great way to think about user experience in applications. Today we are used to these kind of like professional apps where the navigation is on the side. And the tabs on the top, it used to be nice, kind of like the labels, yes, I get it, but it also used to kind of take a lot of space on the top and usually we scroll from the top to the bottom, not to the side. So taking more real estate on the top and tabs doesn't make sense anymore in 2023, four and above. And putting all these to the side, or even making it contractible like that, it just gives me the experience of a browser or just the website I'm in. And also, by the way, this URL bar here on the top is only because I, pref I checked that in the preferences. The default is actually not to even have that. The URL bar is actually on the top of the sidebar by default in Arc. So I just made it here on the top. But anyways, once it's contracted, all I have to do is go over to the left with my cursor here and this opens up. And now I can see my tabs, I can close, I can switch between tabs with just picking a tab visually, or I can also go through tabs with either the command one, command two, command three, uh, you know, just like regularly we know from from Google Chrome or with uh, command alt and uh, arrows. Now I define my arrows to either go up and down and to the right and to the left. You can customize the keyboard shortcuts here in R, but you can basically you can do whatever you want in order to, to like make it your own, right? The, the keyboard shortcuts are amazing here. All right, which really brings me to my next thing that I love about R. Listen up. Now, shortcuts are super easy to also manage here, but also there are some built-in shortcuts that are just amazing. So like I said, the command one, command two, command three are great. But here's one that I love, which basically it's like, if you want to copy the URL, right? We use, we have a lot of times where we copy a URL, correct? We have many times where we copy a URL, right? We copy the URL to paste it into our, our Slack or to the WhatsApp or to any other app, right? And send it to someone. Now here, it's very easy to copy the URL only by just clicking Command Shift A. And that copies the URL to the clipboard. So now I have it copied and I can paste it anywhere. So Command Shift A copies the URL and now you have it on your clipboard. Okay, so a lot of the times, we want to copy the URL, the website of the website we're in, right? We want to paste that into Slack, send it to someone, send some website via the URL via email, paste it into some kind of app. So it's very easy to copy URLs here, but just, and probably you know, other browsers have it too, but it's super easy. Command Shift C, copy the URL, copied current URL. You see this thing over here? Really easy to work with. You shortcuts just make life much easier, especially for nerds like me. Okay, another thing I love about Arc is the way that they do pop-ups or basically the way that you open links. So if I go to a link in Monday and I want to open, let's say, a portfolio of a designer in Monday, someone who applied, right? So I can go over to his port his or her portfolio, whatever, and I click that portfolio. And look, it opens inside a pop-up in my main browser. So it doesn't open a new tab, throws me off of Monday. I'm in a workflow of now going through candidates on Monday. And because 
Arc knows this is a table or this is like a link that should be opened and pop up first. Maybe I would just review it, click quickly and then close it. So it opens it in a pop up with the availability of like these buttons to expand, right? With all the obviously shortcuts as well and to close. And I can just also hit escape and it will close and I can go on to the next candidate. It does it so for emails as well, like links inside emails. I go into my email, I check out the link, I tap the link, I click the link and it opens this pop-up. It's so convenient and it goes for almost everything that it's kind of like in my mind, I would love it as a pop-up. So I don't know how, if they have specific websites that they target in that way or not, but it's so much easier to, to work like that with these pop-ups because they don't have to be thrown off to a separate tab. Like that increases your productivity, it saves you time and it kind of like it doesn't throw you off your workflow, if you know what I mean. So another thing I love is now the use of media. So let's say I'm going into a website and I have this video, right? This is like the contrast website. I scroll down and see a video. I play this video and I can now I can watch the video playing. Now I want to switch to a new tab. I go on to the new tab and then what happens is the video contracts and shown here in this widget. This goes the same for Google Hangouts. So if I'm in Google Hangouts, now we'll see the image of the people here, the video material now being displayed here in a widget. It's so convenient for everything that related to media online because you're always multitasking. So you see the video while you can scroll to other tabs or if the uh, speaker mentions some website you should check out, you can go and check out that website and you won't be thrown off of YouTube. You know, it's like, so let's close this one. By the way, back to tab button really quickly. Pretty cool. Going onto YouTube, watching another video. Let's say uh, I'm watching this video on YouTube and now I also want to jump onto this next tab, whatever. And now again, the video is here and I can pause it, I can play. I, you know, it's so I can control it or I can get back to the tab to watch it. So easy, man. All right, so that's another thing I love about Arc. The next thing I love about Arc is something we call glorify the main item. All right, so this is a, a design UI, me geeking out on, uh, on my own methodology kind of thing, but we have a methodology in contrast called design triggers, which are the ways of creating emotional UI design. A lot of big apps and the best apps that actually, like in the best brands, use specific tactics in UI in order to elevate our emotional connection to their app, to the brand. And one way of doing that is called the glorifying the main item. Now glorifying the main item, it means just giving respect to some of the main items that we want to give respect to that deserve the respect. So for instance, here in R, they give major respect to the favorite tabs. So we have these favorite tabs and all of a sudden, first of all, you see that it's different from Chrome. These are in, they just look different. They are in big kind of like buttons that I can go ahead and, you know, get straight into working with them. But the beautiful thing about it is that you barely notice it at the beginning, but it's like when you tap one of them, let's say I go to Monday, see you now the, the background here has changed. There's a border around it, right? Let's let's zoom in for a second to, for us to, to see it more clearly. So I'm zooming in here and you see that the border has been marked, right? So now I'm like, I'm here, um, I'm switching to Google Sheets. Now I'm switching to Google Sheets. You see that the border is different. I'm going to GPT. The border is different, the background is different. They color the background and the border with the same colors as the brand, right? Look at the beautiful, beautifully, like the beautiful gradient on the border of Gmail. So the background color and the border color of these buttons is colored by the brand by they're taking it automatically, like, you know, technologically with JavaScript, they're pulling the, the color from the favicon because if I had another website, because I fully control these favorites. So if I had another favicon here, another website, they would pull that favicon from the website, they'd put it here and they'd use these colors to portray that active state of that website when I'm in it, right? Do you get this like, you know, amazing trick here for your experience? Besides that, they have like widgets on them. So you see like they, my, this is my Google Calendar, so it shows you the widget of like your upcoming events. Everything here is like really, really well thought in this browser experience. So, all right, I'll zoom out again. Okay, now let's go to see something else, shall we? All right, so this is like the glorifying the main item. I love this use. It's an emotional trigger design tactic and we love it. All right, if you want to study more about design triggers, 
I'll post the link here in the comments so you can watch the video of me explaining about design triggers or you can go to our website contrast2x.com and watch me here. This is a very short talk that I gave on stage about this tactic and I showed different examples from Apple and other websites on how they do it and trigger the crop brain. So anyways, all right, let's go on and see the next thing. Okay, so two more things I love and then we'll wrap it up, all right? So number one is the use of what's called the command bar UI. So if, you, if you're using a Mac, you have Spotlight, right? When you hit Spotlight, then you have this like Spotlight search opening up in a very convenient place in the middle of the screen for you to now search for whatever you want because it would not make sense for the search to open up there on the top like he used to. This is 2024, come on. So the same thing, and they copied this from, by the way, from a lot of other apps, one of them being Alfred, which Alfred I use up until this day. I don't use Spotlight, I use Alfred. Alfred is an amazing app. It has different things you can do. You can not only search for files, right? For music for design triggers, I see all my presentations, right? If I do key, I will definitely see only my presentations. I can either open it by entering, clicking enter, or I can go to a different, like, I should do a whole video about Alfred, right? Or I can just find it in, in the browser by uh, by typing in find, it will open it in the browser, in Finder for me. So anyway, that can also do things like restart, like comments, right? So it's like a base tab, it's a comment tab. It's not only for finding files, it's also for doing other things. Now, Arc does it as well, in a way. So, they're not, you know, I don't fully know what all you can do with the command bar in Arc because I haven't gotten into it, but I love the view. When you go to a new tab, so I do Command T for a new tab, or if I click here, then what happens is, like, let's tap this URL bar here. So look what happens. A command bar opens up, and in this command bar, you can do all different things. Search actions, right, by clicking tab, right? So a new incognito we know, recently closed tab, extensions, JavaScript, account, like so many things you can do with this, which is amazing. So I love to geek out on these kind of things, and and but it's so easy just to kind of type in a URL in the center instead of on the top in this like short small thing like this is very very convenient. So when I open a new tab, I do Command T. It's like okay, sure. Do you want to paste and go? Do you want to look? This is paste and go. I had this in my in my clipboard. I was like, do you want to paste and go, or do you want to type in a URL or whatever you want? I want to go to one of your recent tabs. So it's so convenient in that way. This command tab, command bar UI and functionality is very, very modern. And I think it's also practical. It's productivity oriented. And it's also, let's face it, you know, the geeks between us would love it. So, all right, let's continue. Last but not least, I want to introduce you the split view. Now, let's say you have two tabs you need open at once. I know you can take new windows and you, there's different apps for the Mac. I have them too with different keyboard shortcuts where you can now place two windows in Mac, one besides the other. But you have that integrated inside R. So for instance, when I'm doing research and I wanna check out some things in ChatGPT and I wanna in the meanwhile just copy things from here to into Miro or whatever, I, I use it for so many different levels. Like sometimes I have two different spreadsheets open here and open here. Sometimes I watch a tutorial and I'm working on my own, like whatever, let's say it's a tutorial on how to do something in Google spreadsheets for formulas. So I have mine here. I have the, the example from the tutorial here. And even the video can be playing over here, the, over the tutorial. It's like so easy to have two tabs open. At the beginning, I was like, oh, I'm not going to use it. Who uses this like lead view? And then I started using it and I'm like, wow, like this is amazing. I, I don't have to use it all the time, but sometimes it's just the right thing to do to have two windows kind of like in the split view and quickly you can you know just shut them down or just add them by saying add split view and then it opens this window with this command tab and says here what do you want to paste in here like what URL do you want to go to so it's really really easy and also I just love this feature all right so guys I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did please like subscribe comment check this out I just want to kind of show you how I just I just love sharing things that make me more productive and hopefully this will make you more productive as well does it fit my business goals probably not it's just like me giving some value out there and also supporting ARC supporting good teams that do good job again I'm not affiliated with ARC I don't even know you know like how you can earn money with like being affiliated with ARC 
but I definitely love this browser. So I thought about giving this honest review of these seven things that I like about it. Guys, again, feel free to comment. Feel free to ask me any questions here in the comments and I would answer them happily. All right, take care. Cheers.